Chargers Unleashed. Jake Captain and Dale Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. If this is your first time tuning in show, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And if you are joining us from ESPN, thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate you joining the show today because we have a very, very special guest joining the show today. And like always, I leave the honors of introductions to a one Dan Wolkenstein. So without any further ado, Dan Wolkenstein, the floor is yours. Who is joining Chargers Unleashed today? Oh, man. Chargers fans, make sure you check your electricity. Have the generator ready. The lights may come out. They might come back on. Mr. Lights out. Three-time All-Pro edge linebacker, Mr. Sean Merriman, Chargers legend, joins Chargers Unleashed to talk a ton about the Chargers, what they did in the draft, what his expectations are, his new streaming service, Lights Out TV. So much of that and more on Chargers Unleashed. Jake, I'm pumped for this one. Sean is such a great ambassador for the team, for the fans. And his energy just oozes through the camera and through the mic. Uh, but Jake, before we get to that, let's pay the bills real quick. Let's talk about our friends over at Bet Online. Just want to remind everybody that Bet Online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season, including MLB, golf, NBA, and NHL playoff stats. All the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow on your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport that is out there. Head on over to the website today. That's betonline.ag today, or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Chargers legend, founder of Lights Out Sports, Sean Merriman joins us next on Chargers Unleashed. Well, we are super excited today. Chargers fans, you are in for a wild one. We have a former three-time NFL All-Pro, Chargers legend, Mr. Lights Out himself, founder of Lights Out Sports, and now Lights Out TV that is now streaming for free. Sean Merriman joins Chargers Unleashed. Sean, Lights Out, thank you so much for coming on, man. We appreciate you. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. As always, man, you guys are really cool, man. Thank you. Of course, of course. Lots to discuss today. Sean, you have uh, experience and perspective that I think a lot of Chargers fans would love to kind of tap into. And so we're going to do our best to do that. We're going to talk about your days in Marty Ball. We'll talk about your thoughts on this team, Justin Herbert, Jim Harbaugh, like what this team needs to do. But let's kind of just kick this thing off from the overhaul that we've seen so far this season. Uh, Coaching front office have gone through a massive overturn, right? You got Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler's not there. You got 14 free agents signed along with the draft picks they made. Joe Hortiz, Jim Harbaugh, so many things have gone on. But what do you make of that partnership and how they've navigated the offseason so far? I, I think, um, look, we don't. No one, no, that's just a guarantee, right? We don't bring in a new coach. You guys, we're, we're going to go to the Super Bowl. You're going to win 12 plus games. We, no one knows. But if you look at the offseason moves they've made right now, they're, they're making some identity moves, right? Like this team has been lacking that for some time, right? Who are they? Are they a physical team? Are they a speed team? Are they a finesse team? Like we, 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 they have no identity. And so if you look at Jim Harbaugh and the way they're establishing what they're trying to build now, they're sending a message to everybody in the AFC West, right? We're going to run the football. We're going to protect Justin Herbert. We're going to go out and get two running backs and Gus and J.K. Dobbins. Um, you know, we're going to get everybody up to speed. And check this. Out. I'm going to tell you because I'm a I'm a meat I'm a natural meathead, right? I'm always be a lifelong meathead. That's why you're here. I mean, come on now. But, you know, look. <laughs> when when is the last time you've seen a strength and conditioning coach in a press conference, right? We haven't seen it. And so I think for me personally, the reason why Jim Harbaugh has so much success early on is because he comes in and turn things around from the day he walks in, right? You haven't seen Super Bowl talk. You haven't seen playoff talk. You haven't seen championship. We, we haven't seen that. He's talking about getting guys in the weight room today and competing today, getting the, the, these all season workouts and getting, that's how you change things right away because you're going to weed out the guys that don't want to be there. And and I and I do believe they've had some guys in that locker room, you know, starting with that 63 point slack and they got put on them by the Raiders. I mean, they got some guys in there that's, that's not, that doesn't want to be a part of the program. So you're going to weed those guys out starting on the off season. So I think they made, so many moves to send a message to the AFC West in general, but also to the center identity. This is who we're going to be, guys. We're, we're going to be a physical team. We're running the ball, and then when we need to, we'll throw the ball down the field. It's a perfect transition to my next question for you, Sean, because you talk about that identity, them trying to find it. What type of team are they? And again, lots of additions made through not just free agency, but the 
draft. So focusing on this year's draft specifically, what are your thoughts and takeaways from the 2024 class and how do you see them impacting this team and more so the identity that Harbaugh and company are looking to install? I um I was shocked, right? But with the with the fifth pick and they took Joe Alt. And I would tell you why. Not because Joe Alt's not a great player. There was no talk other than the wide receiver talk to a couple of days before the draft, right? You remember Malik Neighbors taking his visit out to LA, looking at the houses. I mean, he was, you know, the feel was okay, Ken Allen's gone, Mike Williams gone. We're gonna bring in a wide receiver because we knew uh Marvin Harrison Jr. was gonna be gone. The next guy in line was gonna be Malik Neighbors. If you go back and look at the pick and look at what I just talked about, about the identity, them trying to establish who they are, this is a Jim Harbaugh pick. This was a, hey, guys, this is who we are now. And I, the reason why I love it is because they brought in all the missing pieces by trading up, getting light from, from Georgia, they, they uh, Rice from USC. They're bringing in guys that are fighters that, that want to scr- you know, scratch, scrounge, and get those extra yards, like scrappy-minded guys. Right, we're not talking about, about these big, big blue chip wide receivers or anything. We're talking about guys that you're going to come in and fight, right? That's what the attitude they're they're presenting. So, um, I give them I give them an A man for the for the overall draft. They they fill the void at that wide receiver position. I think I think Lab's going to come in and really turn some heads. I think he has an opportunity to be a, a rookie of the year type of caliber guy if he goes out and performs like how we think he can. Um, and also, too, man, they they filled every they filled every piece to the puzzle that they were missing, right? It went from oh they got no wide receivers and now a lot, and, and they they quickly fixed that. And so going into the season, I'm hoping for a big season out of Quentin jo- Quentin Johnston. Um, I think he'll he, they'll find a way to get him involved in the offense. I think they're going to do a lot of damage this year. I, I see them winning 12 games. Now, real quick, uh, you mentioned two players there, Quentin Johnston, and you mentioned the draft picks. Former Maryland player, obviously, Tarheeb still. Is that your favorite player? If not, who's your favorite draft pick that they brought in? And then I'll get to Quentin Johnson in a second. Um, Lied, man. I I mean, only because I played against the West Welkers. I played against the Edelmans. I played against, you know, those guys who really was a dagger, right? They were a da- they were such a key part of that Patriots dynasty when they were winning. They, they wasn't, you know, they wasn't the the big name guys. They were the guys that was going to get the ball, for, get scratch, scratch the scrounge for the first downs, really make you pay when, when it was on the line. And that's what kind of that's what kind of guy they have in him. So I think that he's probably my favorite draft pick. Um, I want to see how Joe, Joe Old's going to look at that right tackle position. I'm sure they've probably talked to him before and asked him, was he open to moving over to that right tackle position as well? As a pa- as a former pass rusher, dude, I don't want to see Rashawn Slater and Joe Alt. I mean, my God, which which side do you go and you pick, right? Like, what poison do you want to, to today? So, I, I I love that draft pick as well. Now, master of identity. You know, you talk about Jim Harbaugh identity, Sean Merriman identity. Lights out. I remember the light switch going on and off all throughout San Diego days, and now you got the lights out TV. You got so much going on here, and we're going to talk about that towards the end of the show. I guess like the a question that I have kind of going back to it, and you mentioned like the West Welkers and the New England days back in the day and how a lot of Chargers fans and we were a lot of times thinking it was going to be a Malik neighbors, right? But then you go back and Jake and I were just talking about this on a previous show. You go back and look at some of those insane teams that you were on, right? You go back to the 14 and two team and we go back and look at the stats. There wasn't a thousand yard receiver. Antonio Gates hit 924 as a tight end. Eric Parker was your leading receiving yards with 659, and that team was a juggernaut. And so yeah. just because they don't get the wide receiver one, quote unquote, doesn't mean they're not going to punch you in the face. They, they, there's ways to punch you in the face. There's little uppercuts, there's body shots, there's, you know, there's ways to wear you down. And and this and when I, since I'm in the combat sports arena now, this is this is a body shot type of team. This is not we're gonna throw some big haymaker and try to knock you out down the field. This is we're going to run the ball and body and body. And what happens in, in, with, with a lot of fighters, you start going to the body enough, later on in those rounds, they got nothing left. And that's what's happening. Jim Harbaugh, if you look at his Michigan days, what did they do? They ran the hell out of the football. Most of their big plays, 30-plus yards down the field, was play action. And let me tell you, man, it, there's nothing more demoralizing than a team that's running the football and got the ability to hit something big down the field. Because as a pass rusher, it just beats you up. You're playing on your heels. You can't pin your ears back and go. And so – it. 
if, if they get effective in that running game, which it looks like very well, they will be with, with Zion and Rashe- uh, Rashawn Slater and, and now all – they get effective in that running game. Justin Herbert is going to have a field day throwing that ball down the field, and, and that's what I see is going to happen. Now, I, I think it's it's interesting. We see the 14-2 and two team, right? And you, a lot of Chargers fans – have talked about some of the similarities that they see between like Marty Ball with Marty Schottenheimer back in the day. And then, you know, you were in- impressive with Nor- Norv Turner as well, which I think was kind of like that. But the Chargers team's on their fifth head coach since Marty, which is wild. But that style of play with the greats of yourself and LT and Gates and Low Neal, you lived and breathed Marty Ball for two years on this team. Do you see the similarities of Marty Ball to what Jim Harbaugh does? Like, what are the similarities or differences between what he does and what you've done? It, it is very similar. And, you know, it's funny. I always try to stay away from the comparisons, right, because that was a different era. Um, you know, the rules are way different now. Certain things you can't do anymore. The style of play has become more of an offensive-driven league, a quarterback's league. But when you go back to and start reverting to playing a brand of football that people don't want to play, when it's physical, they're running the ball, they're stopping the run, they're, they're hitting you in the mouth for four quarters, man, that is just going to wear guys down. And, and I'm telling you, I, when we, for example, we used to play the Chiefs, and they would you know, have Priest Holmes back there, and then Larry Johnson ended up coming in. They were running the ball 30, 35-plus times a game, and you, powers, eye, near sets. Far, I mean, they were, you would like, man, Brian Waters and Willie Rolfe and – you like, man, this is this is terrible. I mean, t- Tony Rich, it was it was dude, you would leave that game and your shoulders when you wake up in the morning, just from taking on blocks and full back. You're like, my God, I can't, you know. So you you establish a brand of football that you want to be known for around the NFL. When that film comes on and people see you for the first time, they're like, Man, we don't want to play those guys. They're 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 physical as hell, they're gonna hit you in the mouth for four quarters. And it's not very often that the game is reverted back to that. So I'm glad to see that that's becoming of importance to them again. You talked about, obviously mentioned it there previously, as far as the identity in general of getting more physical, running the ball, some of those free agent moves that they have done. But what are your expectations for Justin Herbert in this new offense under Harbaugh and Greg Roman? Because this has kind of been the, the, I guess what everybody has been trying to figure it out because he's got such a great arm and great athletic ability as a quarterback, very mobile. And we've seen him perform so well under those circumstances, but people are worried about that. They're going to just take that away and it's going to be 30 handoffs a game and he's not going to be able to do what he does best. But I don't see that being the case if you're running it that much and it's going to open up so much for the defense. So I'd really love to hear your perspective on that. Let me tell you, somebody like Jim Harbaugh, who's been gushing over, Justin Herbert, even when he was at Michigan, if you think people think that he ain't gonna throw the ball, that he they are crazy. I mean, <laughs> he, he's what he's setting you up for is to establish an identity, you know, setting the tone, right? You have to do that because if you if you come out and your mindset is 70% passing, your team is probably gonna have an attitude of a 70% passing type of organization. That's what happens. Right. When you come out and say, we're going to run the football and we're going to stop the run and we're going to protect Justin Herbert. It, now everything else opens up. The pass and all that stuff becomes second. And let me guys, let me tell you, I mean, you see Justin Herbert on the field. This dude, a person is a big dude. He is a big person, but he's a big quarterback. And guess what? He's fast. And he's mobile. So, you know, him being able to get in shotgun, getting some of those RPO actions, and so, he can hurt you just as much with his legs as well so he didn't have to be a lamar jackson he didn't have to be a one of these you know quarterbacks who are very skilled at running the football he just had to do enough to put a threat there he, he has to do enough to put a threat there and nothing against lamar jackson but we as far as capabilities of throwing the football justin herbert has the has a, a, a higher ceiling and what he can do as far as throwing the ball and so when you when you look at it that way and teams running the ball and they establishing a run and now that those long crossover routes down the field, those, uh, you know, uh, big plays, streaks down the field, those things open right up because it lowers you to sleep. You got to, you know, those cornerbacks, those safety, got to start stepping up in the box. And next thing you know, they, somebody's going right behind you. And it, it is the perfect setup, man. So I, I'm i excited because I think they bring a brand of football. Like, again, I hate the comparison. I don't want to compare. But 
our t- when you played us back in those mid 2000 teams, you didn't want to play us. You just didn't because people were going to Jamal Williams, Lorenzo Neal. We are running the football. We're stopping the run. And, and, and they're putting that mentality back into the guys. And I think there's no better way to do it. I know you said there that you you didn't want to necessarily compare because obviously it's a different brand of football than what it was when you played under Marty Schottenheimer in those days. But what do you think it will take for the current roster and this front office to get them turning into that style of football? Do you think that they already have the pieces in place or do you still still think that there's some pieces that need to be filled in that regard? Have you seen Zion and and, uh, and Rashawn Slater this, this all season? <laughs> Look. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm still trying to figure out if that if they were Photoshop or not. I'm still trying to figure <laughs> out that. I mean, I'm yo. I was looking at that. I said, man, hold on, hold on. Once I don't know which weight row program they're on, but that's not the one we were using when I was there because <laughs> those dudes. I mean, if if you're looking at the the um j- just the stamp and 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 what they're trying to build, they're going to run the football guys. That mentality is there, and and it's going to be established day one and. Uh, the fun part about me about this is we've seen what Jim Harbaugh did in the past as far as turning programs, organizations around. He's did it. For, he's did it with far less. He's done that with far less. He didn't do it with a Justin Herbert. He didn't have a Rashawn Slate. Like, come on, he, he didn't have a Derwin James and a Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. You know, so he's walking in the door now with like pieces to a puzzle. Now he's just putting it together and now establishing a mentality. And I think that's been missing there for a very long time. In fact, you know, we, I was texting Jim uh, Harbaugh the other day, and we were just talking about that. Yeah, I kind of just thanked him for for um, bringing that identity back to the team and 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 just getting the fan. You know, obviously, you guys have been around long enough that I'm really close to the fans, so I care about you know them feeling confident going into the season. I care about you know the diehard ball club and those guys in the parking lot feeling good about the team and, and just, just, re- just restoring that confidence back in the fan base that we once had. And you can feel it. I mean, it's palpable the difference in this offseason compared to what we've had, not just last year, but arguably over the past decade. And it's palpable. And that's because of that identity and the confidence and the experience that Jim Harbaugh brings. And you're totally right. And it's fun to hear like, oh, it's Sean Merriman is just texting Jim Harbaugh. Like that's also just fun to hear that like the, the brotherhood and the family I mean, look, at the end of the day, he was still a charger back in the day. Like, this is his family, too. And so kind of restoring that, I think, is something that Chargers fans have all kind of been behind. Now, a couple of questions before I want to ask you about your Lights Out stuff, because you have so much stuff going on. You followed this team and were a part of the team, but you've followed the team since you played intimately. Fan favorite since you played. How do you, like, define success for this team this year? Like, what should Chargers use as the benchmark? For what that means, I think they have the roster. I think they have the capabilities to win a division this year. Um, I know that everybody's talking about Kansas City and the three P and everything else. Um, to see them not make the playoffs last year with this talented roster that they had was was embarrassing. It just sucked the life. It was like, man, how 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 can you miss the playoffs in general well, with this? Why? With this? Uh, I was gonna ask you. So, like, you know, I'm not to take shots at the previous regime, but like. What happened, in your opinion? I think the leadership. Everything starts from the top. Everything. And um, to see, you know, uh, uh, Harowitz, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, the GM there, he, he um, to see him doing a press conference and then uh, the conversations they're having, it, you can tell the, the attitude starting from the top. And I'm not taking a shot at Tom Telesco. I think Tom Telesco's biggest problem was he stood by Brandon Staley probably when they should have got rid of him at the, at the Jacksonville game the previous year. Um, so I'm not taking a shot at him at all, but you can tell the attitude is different walking around that. There's a, there's a different level of pride in that building. Now when I talk to some of the people that they're still in that building in, in the PR and community, they're walking around. They're different. This is a different team. This is a different organization. It's different feeling that's going around that building now. And it all starts from the top. Now you're a defensive mind. You mentioned it. You, Sean Phillips, you guys were crazy back in the day. You know what dominant edge play looks like. You got you had 39 and a half sacks in your first three years, which is wild. New defensive scheme. Jesse Minter leading the helm. You got Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, Thule in a second year. Like this group has a chance to be dominant. From your perspective, like how would you assess the line right now and like what it needs to actually be dominant like we saw back in the day with yourself and Sean Merriman's and crew? 
Yeah, well, you, you obviously got two outstanding outside linebackers and pass rushers, right? And Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. What I would like to see, and it was an unsung hero for us and Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams doesn't get talked about enough. I mean, I, I credit yeah, a lot of so my I, I credit a, a lot of my um my play and my sacks and my um accolades to Jamal Williams because he allowed he stuffed up that middle. You would not run up that middle, even on passing situations, you cannot step up and um deliver a ball down the field because of Jamal Williams. So I, the last piece that, in my opinion, that they need to get really get there is, is a big defensive uh, tackle. Somebody that's going to stop the run, clog up that middle because they were pretty bad last year running the football. And you can't win when, when team is running the ball down your throat. It just can't happen. We're talking to Sean Merriman here on Chargers Unleashed. For those who are joining us on ASP, Ian, thanks so much for tuning in. You can hit the link on YouTube, find us on Chargers Unleashed to get the full episode there. Sean, a couple of more questions before we get you out of here, obviously. Uh, you had talked about just the mentality in terms of what you deem as success. You've been there with Marty Schottenheimer and seen the success out of that system. As it stands, what the pieces are right now, we could be talking about front office coaching, offense, defensive side of the ball. What do you feel are the three biggest determining factors in how this team is going to find success this season? The first thing you need to do is win those close games, right? Like, you know, they, they has, I think it was Dallas. They had a, they had a close game against and, and some of the other games, like those games within six points or seven points that they lost last year. You got to get those. Th those are the ones you got to finish out. Um, what I would like to see them do is start fast, right? Because they, they played a lot of catch up during the second half, but more importantly, um, you got to win a division. You, you have to. And I, and I know they're talking about Kansas city going to three and all this other stuff, but, I, if I didn't believe that they couldn't win a division, I wouldn't say it. Um, I'm not trying to be that much of a homer, that biased. Uh, I I believe they have the the tools there right now to go out and win a division, and and then you can start talking playoffs and championships after that. But you got to be the best team in your division. We all know about the Lights Out Network, Extreme Fighting. Then we get the big announcement earlier this week. You're launching a new Lights Out Sports television network. And this is yeah. obviously for you been a long time coming. Give us some of the background on how everything came together and what people can expect from this new network. Yeah, I just uh, launched Lights Out Sports TV. You guys can download it. It's free, 100% free. Um, you guys can download on your Roku. We're on Apple TV. We're on every major TV platform and also your Apple and Android. So go ahead and give us a download. Give us a rating there. Um, and everyone knows about my Lights Out Extreme fighting uh, fights, which we have a big one, uh, May, May 18th in Long Beach, California. You get your tickets at LightsOutXF.com. But this is the cool thing. We're going to be live exclusively on Lights Out Sports. Uh, we got like a 19 fights, a five-hour show on the 18th. So people can watch us you know, for, for five hours if you choose to. Hopefully you all will. Uh, but more importantly, we got World Poker Tour coming on there, Glory Kickboxing, uh, Swerve Combat Chess is on an outdoor America, your fishing, hunting, motorsports, speed vision will be up there next week. You're fishing, you're, uh, you're surfing, you're skateboarding. I wanted to create something that was the closest thing to going to a locker room, right? With just sports. I'm still a subscriber to these other streaming. So I still got my, you know, my other streaming services. Um, but there was very few things out there that was, um, just sports, right? You want to go to it. You don't have to sift through 300 plus channels. Uh, you can go there and get all your sports. So by next not by next Friday or Saturday, we should have about 10, 10 or so channels up and running live as well. And then uh, the week after, we should have another five or 10. But we, we wanted to create, by the way, you can you can watch it all over the world. That that was another thing for me. You can We can download it on any one of these apps all over the world. And uh, also to make it free, man. I thought that was important for us to, to be able to make that free so people can watch. Now, I, I got to say, like, it, it's awesome to see you know, someone as talented you, you know, about former all pro now kind of turning things around and kind of becoming this entrepreneur. And you've been one for a while now. If you have not done so, you can go follow Sean Merriman. You know where he is, but lights out XF on X lights out TV, all of that Sean Merriman's baby. And it's so fun to see all of this kind of come to fruition for you. Sean, you're a man of the people. Chargers fans are now like in euphoric moments and euphoric times with Jim Harbaugh. What's your message to Chargers fans? in this new era uh just just get ready get prepared man they're gonna come out firing this is a new this is a, a new team this is a new attitude um the chargers should be more excited about this team and this season coming up than they have in the last decade and they have more than enough reason to i think they got great leadership 
I think the mentality has changed and watch the new identity is going to change. So uh, can't wait to see everybody when the season start up, man. But get ready. This was this one's going to be a big one. Sean Merriman joins Charge Nelly. Sean, thank you so much for coming on. This has been so much fun. Long overdue. We appreciate you. Fans love you. Go check out Sean's new platform. Hit the download. Make sure you give him a rating. Subscribe. Follow him on X, wherever you get him. Uh, best of luck to you and all of your endeavors. It's so exciting to see the glow up continue for you. Uh, you're a friend of the show. Welcome anytime, all right? Thanks, fellas. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it.